So hi, I'm JB, and I'm going to talk about the journey we had at Zenly, moving from Elasticsearch to SideLDB. So you've got a lot of technical from the last two days, so I'm going to be more high level. Maybe just tell you the story of Zenly. So first, who am I? Uh, my name is JB. I'm the head of infra at uh, Zenly. I've got quite a lot of experience with mobile startup. I've been working at Upgradis and Badge.com. This is two big startup in Europe. And I've worked with Cassandra for a long time, almost six years. So first, what is Zenly? Zenly is a mobile application available on both iOS and Android. And the purpose of Zenly is to let you know where your friends are in real time. The real time part is quite important for us. So where do we come from? We come from Elasticsearch. This is debatable, but at Zenly we had like tons and tons of database. We had Elasticsearch as a main database. We had Redis for cache and we had like tons of Redis. As soon as we started to add some feature in Zenly, we started to use Cassandra. I mean, I had a lot of experience with Cassandra. I had coworkers with good experience too. And we have some other database, Postgres. Uh, Postgres for data science team. At some point, I think it was too difficult to say what were the database we used in, in production. It was way too difficult. We had so much. So that means it was difficult to monitor. And it was difficult to say where was the data at some point. So why did we use Elasticsearch in the first place? Zenly is a startup. So we need to have something simple to do data modeling. I mean, we needed velocity, so we act, basically, Elasticsearch. We used it only for the search, because we used it as a query language. So instead of knowing where was our data, we are just searching for it. This way, it was not a problem for developers. It was only a problem for operation. It comes at a cost, obviously, for ops people, but not for developers again. Otherwise, Elasticsearch is just a simple key value. It offers sharding, replication. So for a startup to start with, it was easy. We also had versioning. We did not use that much, but we had it. Why, why leaving Elasticsearch? I mean, the hack was cool. It was fun, but operation was a pain. And the company grew. We had lots of users, and Elasticsearch was starting to fail. Our data model was stable. We have a very particular workload. Zenly is geolocation, so it's mostly updates, a lot. And if you know how Elasticsearch works, Lucene in particular, Lucene does not like updates. And of course, we, of course, we needed to unified database for every developer in the company, just because we needed to be more simpler. And uptime is critical. And we did not use Elasticsearch feature anymore. We did not use search for, them for more than a year, so it was not needed. Like I said, I'm used to Cassandra, my friends too. So we should have stayed with Cassandra. I mean, at first we wanted to use Cassandra. But we use Cassandra for chat messages. So this is the problem. This is a message we saw so many times, like for chat messages and of course, like in all my career. With Cassandra, it was a pain. 
So, we do not use, we are not Twitter, we do not use hundreds and hundreds of nodes. We have small clusters, maybe 10, 15 clusters at top. Garbage collection, if you have lots of nodes, okay, it's easy. But we don't. The problem we have is we have lots of developers coming in and we don't have time to teach them the best way to use Cassandra. But still, we love Cassandra. I mean, the design, the design is great. That's why every, everyone is here, because we love it. But the, there is a GC, so we're starting to think about moving to Scylla. We watched Scylla since day one, since the first, uh, the first post on uh, Hacker News, I think. We had lots of debate. Uh, some of us thought maybe we could just use Postgres as a database. Like one big database could work. And of course, we are told not to use Docker in production. But, well, we did. <laughs> First migration, Kubernetes. Uh, Zenly is a big user of Kubernetes. Like big. We have 12, 12 clusters in production. Except Kafka, and even at that time, Kafka was still in Kubernetes. Um, why? Because it scales. I mean, we are using uh, GKE, so it's the managed Kubernetes in uh, Google Cloud. It scales, networking, we don't have to care about it. Logs, everything is included. So if we could put CLDB in Kubernetes, it would be great. But we had some big latencies, like huge. A single query on Scylla could take maybe 100 milliseconds. So it was catastrophic. The reactor load on Scylla was huge, like 90. And we called CylaDB. We, we told them like, okay, what's going on? What's happening? And then they told us about what was Scylla and Sistar and how it works. Sister is sharding. So one shard, one core. It's important because in Kubernetes, when you are reserving CPU, you are reserving time. So on your CPU, you're not gu uh, guaranteed, sorry, just to be the only one on this CPU. And that, that was happening to us. I mean, we had some process, we took time, and Scylla was not working anymore. But still, we have 12 clusters. 12 clusters. We love Kubernetes. And we want to make, to, to make Scylla work in Kubernetes. There is a new feature flag in Kubernetes called CPU Manager coming in a few weeks in GKE. And this feature flag is going to, basically what it's going to do is you can reserve a, a core of the machine directly to your, uh, to your container. But if we can do that, CyberDB is gonna work on Kubernetes. So we moved again. A new infra, uh, three clusters, two single region, one double. Uh, again, this is small clusters. Uh, why two region for one? This is the, the user cluster. So we want, we want it to be fully available and we have some read heavy workload on it. So we have read heavy on one region and the production on the other one. We have seven machines per cluster, our region, 10 CPUs each, 36 gigabytes of RAM, and two local SSD. If you are not familiar with local SSD on GCP, so Google Cloud, if you lose the machine, you lose the data. So this is bad. It happened to us like five days ago. We lost four machines. <laughs> yeah. So how do we do? We chose to have a pretty high uh, replication factor. We started with three, and now we are going to five. 
this way we can lose at least lots of machines. <laughs> and we don't use Docker anymore. Not yet. Or deployment. Deployment is Ubuntu, LTS for support, and NVMe disk. NVMe and Ubuntu, you got kernel 4.8. On GCP, if you do some heavy workload on the NVMe disk with this kernel, it's not working. Like, it's not. What happened was we had a machine with this setup and the disk were just disappearing at once. So for one day, we had failing machines, like across all the, all the clusters. But it was cool. It was a Chaos Monkey for us. Chaos Monkey, like they said at Netflix, is destroy everything. We lost lots of nodes, and Scylla was still working. And the failure of each node never provoked any downtime, and we didn't lose any data. Why are we using uh, lots of clusters? For everything at Zenly, <coughs> from the application level to the ops level, we do feature isolation. Even with our teams, we have feature squad. Why? Because you can last a big part of your feature, like even it's in on the application, on your database, and the application is still gonna work. It's cool for developers. If a developer wants to improve the way it uses uh, SILADB or anything, you can see the result like right away. If you improve SILA, the developer just goes to, to a special graph and he can see what he's doing. Uh, uptime, of course, the, as I said, uh, you can lose clusters. So the uptime for all of our clusters on the last 10 months is 100%. We did not have any major failure case uh, with CIA. We had a few crashes, we had a few bugs, but mainly it was GCP, not CIA. And each time we had no impact at all on production. So it's quite perfect. As I said, Zenly is live. What you want is to give the position of your friends in real time. So everything is about performance, always. This is one cluster in production. So with 300K uh, requests per second. So Scylla can do like way faster, but this is production. And this is the latencies. <coughs> of all the queries we have on this cluster. We are using GCP for tracing. And what's nice on this graph is you can only see one because the P99 on this cluster is under <coughs> the millisecond and the P999 is at three milliseconds. And this is because of GoSQL, not because of SIL. So, Scylla is fast, like I've never seen any database as fast. What I want to say today is just Scylla is production ready. We are using it, like on a day-to-day -day basis, and you can make mistakes. I mean, I've got developers who never, who never worked with either Scylla or Cassandra, and they do make mistakes, they do full scan. They do queries like horrible, but it's still working. You don't need to be as pre-efficient as you were with Cassandra. And for us, it's a big win, like you win money. And of course, it's supported. Cassandra 2 is out, Scylla 2 is out, sorry. And the support team is great. We needed help and we had help within, within the hour, so it's a good product. And of course, as I said, keep an eye on Kubernetes. I think the day Scylla is going to work perfectly with Kubernetes, it's gonna be a huge win for everyone. 
And of course, I want to say go beyond usual use case. Uh, we were talking uh, with a friend, why don't we use Scylla for caching? I mean, today you are going to use Redis or Memcache. Those are great products, yeah. But the problem you have with Redis is you're limited by the amount of memory. I mean, Scylla can do it. You don't have any memory limitation. And it's fast, so in the end, why don't? We could. But the real question was, do we still need a cache with SILADB as a production database? And we don't, basically. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. <laughs>